Hey guys, so today I want to talk about something called anti-art. Is it a valid form of protest in the art world or is it some pretentious form of protest? You decide. Okay, so I want to talk today about something that I call deconstructed authenticity. And it's a unit of work that I produce and have been making for the past few years. Um, as you probably know, I make several types of work. I make several different series. I do constructions, which are the pieces behind me, um, a series of paintings, and also these other um, wall-based sculptures that I refer to as deconstructed authenticity. So the title, even though it sounds a bit pretentious, has a has a you know a rooting in reality. The original idea came from how artists you know traditionally that painted used to sign their work in the corner and I thought well in the age of mass spectrometry and DNA analysis and all of our wonderful modern means of detecting and analyzing things why does a signature need to be the root of validity why does it need to be there in the first place surely you can take a chip of paint from it or, or analyze it with some laser or some some form of analytical technique and if you have the original paintbrush that painted this piece of art you can link the two and therefore um, it is a form of authenticity it's a form of authenticating the original piece and therefore it's a deconstructed variant of that authenticity and that's where the title comes from this morphed actually into something completely different now the, the the aim of this work for me is to kind of redistribute some form of power for the artist art has now become this very distasteful pastime or, or experience or whatever for for most people that i talk to they can't people can't the majority of people can't possibly imagine the reality of something or like you know a hundred million dollars and artwork sells for that and when objects embody that amount of money when it you know is sold for something like a hundred times or a thousand times what what a normal ordinary person would make in their lifetime it removes it to this completely or uh, um this completely uh, elite ultra ultra elite world which is which is the distasteful part and this work goes in some way to try and redistribute that within my own work. Now, I, I dislike capitalism's, um, the, the negativities that come with our current form of capitalism. Now, it would be great to have a reformed capitalism that has people and happiness and fulfilment at the heart of it in a kind of Keynesian way. But instead we have... Um, Friedrich Hayek's model and Milton Freeman's free market capitalism trickle down economic well rubbish to be quite honest you know it's been disproved several times no it's been disproved a lot of times I don't know exactly but e even if it was a better economic model even if it even if it was a worse economic model to have people's happiness at the court for me that would be far better because because then you're actually taking into account what the economy is there for, which is to facilitate our lives, not as an end in themselves. I'm digressing, but it's also relevant because my work, this work, is intended for sale. This work here behind me, this style, is intended for galleries and for individuals to buy. And whilst standing for anti-capitalism or reformed capitalism and perpetuating a capitalistic model it, it it weighed down on me it felt me feel it made it made me feel like a hypocrite it made me question my own ethics and the value of what it was that i'm doing so this work the deconstructed authenticity goes some way towards trying to balance that hypocritical feeling and now i'm quite comfortable with it so I haven't really showed you anything of what, what it looks like. So here are some pictures. Only kidding, the last one was actually just a clock that I like. I just thought I'd put a curveball in there because it's quite ironic, isn't it, that you can't tell the difference between an object and a, and a piece of artwork these days. 
And I know that also annoys quite a lot of people, but for me, it just doesn't matter. You know, I as an artist say that this piece is an artwork and I am quite comfortable with attaching that meaning to it. And if you're uncomfortable with that, that isn't really my problem. You know, you, you, you need to make the effort as well as I need to make the effort. Uh, and if you understand the work and then truly don't value it, that's completely fine. But if you don't understand the work and you don't value it, then it's difficult for me to respect your your outlook because you haven't you haven't tried to understand what it's about or the reason that the person or, or an artist is doing that. And and I believe that there's a, a value attached to the fact that if an artist does that, if an artist takes himself seriously enough to actually produce a piece of work and say this is artwork because I the artist say it is, then that in itself is its own form of validity and that is, is by far a good enough argument to justify it for me. So this work that I just showed you images of, we could do it again. The first one is a paintbrush mounted in a frame. The paintbrush was actually the first piece of deconstructed authenticity I ever made and that embodied the original idea of it had the paint from another piece that I had made and it was would be considered a form of authentication. Now, just putting a paintbrush on the wall didn't aesthetically look right, so I had this old frame lying around, I sanded it up and, and, and took off the gold uh, leaf on top and exposed the underlying colour and put the brush in there in a certain way and made a series of aesthetic judgments that then allowed this piece of bric-a-brac -a to constitute as a, as a, as a ready-made sort of Duchampian variant ready-made as a, as a final piece of artwork. There are aesthetic decisions because I feel that you need to have aestheticism in your work, otherwise it's completely unrelatable to the, the general populace, and for me that's important. So I, I, I like aesthetics, but I value the conceptual idea behind the work more than the aesthetics by a, by a tiny fraction. You know, 51% um, conceptual idea and 49% aestheticism, aesthetic, aesthetic values, aesthetics. The second piece is actually a section of studio flooring, just a piece of uh, tarpaulin to protect the floor in my old studio. And that's then kind of uh, wrapped around a, a stretcher, you know, a, a frame that's usually reserved for canvases. And that again, elevates this, this piece of rubbish to the status of art because I, an artist, give it that power and put it on the wall. And it doesn't follow the traditional lines of craft and making it and intentions, but an artist chooses, I the artist choose that section of flooring for its aesthetic value and then place it on there. And it has the, the contemporary backing of what I'm saying, which is it's anti-elitist and it's anti-art. And the reason it's anti-art and anti-elitist is because it's not for sale. Fundamentally, the work is never, ever, ever for sale. I'm doing this kind of artistic, artistic exercise in, um, in, in, it's kind of reflective, meditative process where you take these objects in and I'm comfortable with it and I, I see the value in it and I suppose it's up to you, the viewer, to also see and find if there's a value for you. And if there's not, that's, again, absolutely fine. But for me, I, find that it's a valuable use of my time and I'm comfortable with that being a justification in itself to continue doing it. The final piece is another section of like just a piece of cardboard that was on the floor that soaked up some of the paint and I thought it had quite a nice aesthetic pattern on there. I mean it looks like an abstract painting and that for me is the kind of um, funny beauty in it. If someone was to walk past it in an art gallery, they would accept that as, a, as an abstract painting. Especially now where there's so many paintings and so many splashes and turds on canvases that and people, people get really uppity over it. People get really upset and think, oh, I could do that. And there's the genuine, well, I could do that phrase. And then the gallerist's response of, well, you didn't, or Damien Hirst's response of, you didn't, you know, you were the first one. But obviously there's more to it than that. There's the accreditation of the art market. And if you're a ratified artist that sells work for X amount, if you do this, there's a good chance that the art market, it's tied to our capitalism right now. 
if someone um, buys a work for 10 million and, and, and the next day it's not worth that, then there's a, a huge problem in the art market because it is coupled as an investable product. It, it is um, a safe way for you to tie your money up. It's also linked to tax avoidance. You know, people can submit or donate works of art for tax write-offs. And when our elite in, in our society is utilizing that, it's very complicated to decouple art from that elitism. And perhaps we've gone past the point of no return and art has to emancipate itself from that, um, from that problem or, or, or it doesn't. I mean, I don't know. This is just one of the things that I believe in and I think that it's a terrible shame and a terrible waste when other people don't have access to this, when the general population don't have access to the to good, genuine um, art. You know, art is there to enrich people's lives and when it's just being used for investment purposes and the whole concept of art for, 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 for people has been tainted and it's distasteful, then then, then, I mean, what a waste, what a shame. So, that's really what the, what deconstructed authenticity is about. It's this anti-art, anti-establishment, cannot be bought, cannot be sold, looks and embodies what an aesthetic, uh, what, a, what an abstract painting or an abstract art object may look like, but then takes that power back by, uh, by, by its non-sellability, by its non-marketability. Therefore, it, it, it undermines the art market and kind of purifies its status as an art object, in, in, in my opinion. Lots of talking, lots of um, no-shows, just all concept this week. And I'm not sure who likes what or why, but to look forward to it next week, I have an exhibition that I'll be setting up. There's a um, quite a nice bar in town that wants to put some of my work on the walls uh, for a month. So I'll be, um, yeah, shipping the, well not shipping, driving the work down there, um, putting it on the wall, showing you the location, and that'll be next week's video. So if you haven't really enjoyed this big, heavy conversation or explanation of the work, then you can look forward to next week's um, montage sequence. So, see you next week.